Hey everybody, welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. I'm Jeff Antoniak. Today, I want to talk to you about the power of cash, whatever that is. Cash, we're going to talk about it. Before we uh, get into it, I want to welcome, of course, all you watching this on YouTube, on video, on Facebook, but also on the podcast. Yes, Digging Deeper is now a podcast. So if you would like to be uh, listening to this kind of stuff as you're driving or cooking dinner or whatever else it is where you should really be paying attention, subscribe to the Digging Deeper Jazz podcast. We're getting some really great results and tons of listeners around the world. So thank you all very much. Okay, this idea of cash, a jazz acronym, what the heck? Yeah, so it stands for, I'm not sure which is worse, the acronym or what it stands for, Contrapuntal Elaboration of Static Harmony. Yikes. Um, but I tell you what, you've heard this stuff tens of thousands of times if you've listened to any jazz. So this uh, acronym was come up with by Jerry Coker, one of the pioneers of jazz education and jazz pedagogy going back quite a while. And I don't know the story, but um, I imagine um, no universities were taking Jerry or Dan Hurley or David Baker or Jamie Abersold, any of the pioneers, were not be take, been taken seriously. In, in the 80s, when I wanted to go get a jazz degree in Canada, there was one university of all the many universities, and it's not the university you think. It's not McGill or one of the big universities. You couldn't get a degree in this stuff. So I think Jerry and some of the other guys said, dudes, we need some acronyms. We need to make this serious. So like the knuckleheads up in the music department will pay attention to us. We need an acronym, Cash. It's something like that. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's talk about what this is. And that lick you heard me play at the very beginning. Or a million variations of it. You've heard Coltrane and Kenny Barron and Kenny Burrell and Cannonball and anybody that you can imagine playing those sort of shapes, those amazing licks that are so intricate but have some great chromaticism in, in them. What's going on? Well, that's exactly it. So contrapuntal elaboration, or I've called it for years incorrectly, chromatic elaboration, but they both kind of work, is some moving parts, a chromatic part that's moving. That's the C and the E part. The S and the H part, static harmony. So over a chord that's sitting still, how can we create movement inside it? Movement makes for interesting melodies and makes for nice, intricate bebop melodies specifically. Okay, so let's, you know, instead of just yakking on about it, let's look at some examples. You're going to, you're going to instantly be aware of these examples and they're gonna ring a bell and it's like, ah, got it. So, first one we look at here is one by the great Thelonious Monk, the melody of the song, In Walked Bud. Obviously, it's static harmony, right? It's just this one minor chord going on. And there's also that static note on top, a pedal tone on the top. And the bottom part is moving chromatically. It's contrapuntal movement. It's counterpoint. It's chromatic. And so that downwards part. And so we can start filling it in as I was doing there with chord tones and all of a sudden it's taking on this other life. Now, did Thelonious Monk invent the cash or this idea? No, it had been around for a zillion years. He used it very overtly in this song. Let's look at another tune where it's composed right into the song. <laughs> Right? Sonny Rollins, Tenor Madness. So the, the harmony is moving a little bit more now. It's a 2-5 progression, right? It's C minor to F7. But there's a chromatic line that moves through there. It's a C down to a B, down to a B flat, down to an A. So that is the, whether we call it voice leading or guide tone line, so th these are all kind of connected, voice leading, guide tones, cash, um, because it's a path through the changes. 
That path, what a classic one. There are millions of licks written, starting on the minor chord, from the root, down, down, down. So you may not think that the first example, In Walked Bud, and Four Measures from the End of uh, Tenor Madness by Sonny Rollins are remotely the same thing, but they are exactly the same thing. They're just compressed or expanded, embellished a little bit differently. So that's a big big deal. So I think you're beginning to hear like, oh, the Mission Impossible theme. Huh, Cash, yeah. James Bond in the comping. And so that's a good point. This isn't just a melodic thing. If we start playing these chords together, yes, we play this as comping, right? These are moving lines inside our comping. So you piano guitar players get to use this idea that I'm presenting today melodically in a harmonic fashion. How about even um, a Latin tune called Brazil? So there, the moving part is five sharp, five, six, sharp, five, six, do, 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 static harmony. And I had a little moving thing going on. Piano Montunos entirely about this idea. So yeah, you've, you've heard it in solos, you've heard it composed into songs, the harmony of songs, you've heard comping with it. Uh, there is a ton going on here. Hey, and before uh, we, we get on to the last part, I want to remind you guys about Maryland Winter Jazz online workshop. It's coming up January 8th through 10th. So that's coming up in just about five weeks if you're watching this in real time. Um, I just look at the news and I see um, how it's going to be a bit of a funky winter for a lot of us, unable to get outside and unable to be with other musicians and connect and do the stuff we want to do. So let's do it online. We have people attending from all over the world, and I'd love for you to uh, check it out too. So visit MarylandWinterJazz.com, and uh, I hope to see you there. Okay, so the last example here is actually one that I transcribed uh, the other day. I was listening to uh, a great Cedar Walton album called Eastern Rebellion, and this is one of the songs we've been doing inside Jazzwire, actually, this uh, blues tune called Bittersweet. And George Coleman played, the sax player on the album, played this amazing lick, and I'm like, man, what the heck is that? That's, I need to know what that is. It sounds like this. <laughs> It's like, yeah, man, that's pretty happening. And then I realized what's going on inside this lick is this. It's static harmony, right? C7. Yeah. So, on a major chord or a dominant chord, that third up to the fifth, chromatically. Three, four, sharp, four, five. So the lick, what you're looking at is the E up to the F, up to the F sharp, up to the G. That is the contrapuntal elaboration of this static harmony. <laughs> So think back to a transcription you may have on your music stand or flip open that transcription book. It's going to be hard to find a page. It may be hard to find a line that doesn't have this sort of idea in there. The funny thing is I have not thought of or used the word cash uh, before this week since 1990 <laughs> when I was at the University of North Texas trying to get out of, uh, well, I, not get out of, I was loving the class, but trying to like get a good grade in the transcription analysis class that Mr. Riggs was running. Um, and so we'd have to go through transcriptions. And, oh, here's a cache and here's an enclosure and here's a such and such, right? These, you know, the lingo. So um, I became very aware of it and I sort of lost the lingo. And so recently it came back to my mind and I thought like, yeah, this is, you know, this is something that we can talk about. It's a nice umbrella. It's a nice homage to uh, Jerry Coker and again, all those great early jazz educators. And so this is something to be thinking about. So Hope I'm going to see you at Maryland Winter Jazz so we can really dig into this. I've given you the super broad 
uh, strokes of an important, important device. So now the trick is, great, you have a sense of what it is. Yeah, I think I've heard that. How do we get that into your playing? I want to help you with that. So I'll see you at Maryland Winter Jazz. Maybe uh, we'll get to work together at jazzwire.net and uh, we will get this stuff rolling. Enjoy your caches, everybody. Mm -hmm.